Good day. My name is Tad Miller, and I've been asked to come show about the art of writing with a quill pen. So we're going to start by talking about how quill pens are made. They're made with the outer feathers of birds. Uh, it can be turkey, it can be goose, it can be crow. Any of the feathers that have a large tube to them, because that's the part that we're going to be making the quill out of. The first step that you want to go through is to wash them off so that they're clean, and then you want to harden them. You do that by taking a pan full of sand, heating it in a fire, not too hot because you don't want to scorch them, and then stick them in there after removing it from the fire and waiting until they cool down. That will drive the moisture out of the, the quills and make them harder and easier to work with. So there's a number of steps that you go through and they're done by using a quill pen. And I have a number of types of quill pens here. Here's one with a fixed blade and you want to keep the blades razor sharp. I have one here with a smaller fixed blade and it has a little nib on the end of it which I find handy because you can use it for cracking the end of the quill where the ink will rise up. So it makes it easier to do that operation. And then we have a classic uh, pen knife that opens up just like a knife that you would have today. Now sometimes they're not quite sharp enough so what I have here is I have a leather pad that has on it some rotten stone. Rotten stone is decomposed limestone and I'm going to strop the blade in order to get it razor sharp and that way I'll be able to have nice clean cuts while I'm doing my manufacture of pens. So I'll leave that sitting out with the others. The basic steps of the pen are to make a long cut and then remove any tissue that is in the middle there. And then you make shorter cuts on the side And then you finish it up by putting a little slit down the end of it that the ink is going to travel up by capillary action so that you can get more than just a couple of letters while you're writing. So let's go ahead and try that. We'll take one of these pens that have been hardened. pen knife, go back, oh, an inch, inch and a quarter, and make a nice long cut. And you can see there's some tissue in there. We'll go ahead and remove that. And now I'm going to want to make cuts from the side that are going to increase the flexibility of the pen and help bring it to a point. Then I'm going to cut down through the pen See if this will help crack it open. And it's nice and cracked. It's a little bit off center, so I'm going to correct that. Now, this just gave me a nice pointed pen, and that's fine if you want a fine line. 
If you want a calligraphy line, what you can do is you can flatten the end of the pen, and the flattened end will give you that broad, narrow line as you stroke along the edge of the paper. Now, what about all the fletching on the arrow? Well, actually, we don't really need that. So, you can just grab it and pull it off. You can leave some at the end, which is handy if you need to brush anything off. Or you can just cut it off right here and have a pen that looks almost like a modern pen. And with this, you're, now you're set to write. Okay. Mrs. Bauer, it's good to see you. Please have a seat. Are you ready for the lesson? Yes. Did you bring your payment? Thank you. So we can get started. Then what I would like you to do is take a look at this copy book and I would like you to select something to write from and demonstrate your best hand. And be careful that you get all the excess off so we don't have any blocks. lighter touch to prevent the scratching sound. I think today we'll be able to go on to writing and sealing letters. Let's take a look at a sample letter and see if... We can put the date and the, and the location up in the corner. And then you need a salutation. I have my dear Mrs. Smith. And then the body of the letter. Please accept my apologies for missing your tea. And on and on and on. And then we end with a sal salutation to close. I remain your humble servant. I remain your most humble and obedient servant. Uh, whatever your relationship with, with it is. And then I signed it, Major William Miller. So I'd like you to write a two or three line letter using this as an example. And then we'll learn how to address it and to fold it up. Okay, before you go on, you, you do see that. So what we're going to do, we're going to take some pounce and put it on there, and that's going to help dry it. So we're just going to give it a few seconds, and then we'll put it back. Okay, okay so let's fold the what you're going to do is you're going to fold the sides in about an inch. About an inch. Crease them down. If you want to use the edge of the wood of the crease, you may. Okay, so you're going to want to have it end up like this if there's room for the wax on the seal. So yes, that looks good. Go ahead and crease it. There's a couple of thickness of paper there, so we'll 
require a little more effort to crease. Okay, to seal it, we're going to want to take the sealing wax and heat it in the fire. And it's kind of a delicate operation because you want to get all of it soft. But you don't really want to catch it on fire. I think you've been very accomplished, and I don't think you'll need a lesson for next week.